Now that we have our Victron inverters wired up and powered on, we can now program them in a split phase configuration and program them to charge and discharge our batteries. All right, I got Victron Connect here on my laptop. The inverters are plugged in together with the MK3 here to the laptop. We're going to go to our device list and we here we see the multi plus two inverters. We have two of them, but they're gonna show up in one device right now um, because they're using the same MK3 unit. We're going to click on them and we get a little notification down here saying firmware is out to date. So we're gonna first update those. We're gonna click on the little gear, enable settings. The default password for inverters is the letter Z three times. We're gonna click on the three little dots up here on the right, go to product information. And here we can update the inverter. Looks like the latest inverter firmware currently is 508. So we're gonna update the inverters to that. Just so you're aware, every time you update a Victron inverter, all the settings are wiped and replaced with factory default settings. So don't, don't update unless you're, you have the time and the knowledge to program your inverters back to where they were. All right, so it's currently updating. Let's get, give that a second. Looks like firmware has finished. So let's go continue. It's gonna take us back to the main page. Let's connect to our inverters. All right, so looks like Victron Connect has identified multiple inverters that are not configured together. Um, that's great because that's what we have here. Let's go through and set up a Victron split phase inverter setup here. So we're gonna go next. Um, experience is required. It's the default password of three Z's. So let's type in the password, Z, Z, Z. Okay, we're gonna go next. All right, so it's searching for inverters. It's gonna find two, because I have two here. Oh, two units found. Okay, um, Victron, we can set up multiple different kind of configurations. We can parallel the two inverters for kind of single output, 120 volts. We uh, could do three, three phase inverters. We'd need three inverters anyways, hence the note right here. Um, we can do 120, we can do split phase 120 degrees out of phase. Um, that's not what we're doing. We're gonna want here split phase 180 degrees out of phase. I'm gonna go next. All right, so we're gonna start the configuration. Um, one of the inverters is blinking. Um, that one, looks like that one right for us is on phase one, L1. So we're gonna assign that one. The other inverter is going to be automatically assigned to L2. All right, the inverters are gonna reset to kind of apply these settings. So we'll give that a second. All right, now, once we finish that, we're gonna go back. It's gonna take us back to the main device list. We'll click on the inverters again. Now that we've set these inverters in a split phase configuration, we can now program the inverters to charge and discharge our batteries and a few other programs, settings like that. All right, we're going to click on one of the inverters. And here we're gonna see um, kind of some settings that we can change. Let's go to general. Here we're in the US, so we have 60 Hertz. So we're gonna leave that here. Um, AC input control is the next value. We wanna set that based on kind of the wires we're using for AC input. Here we have a 30 amps, uh, a 50 amp service. Default was 30, we're gonna set that to 50. Um, we want to make sure that current limit overruled by remote is on. This will allow a Serbo GX, so a GX device or a smart VE bus, smart dongle to change the input current limit using your phone or uh, the Serbo GX. We're going to 
leave everything else here off, like the battery monitor, that's used for applications where you just have the inverter, no DC loads, no charging sources. So we'll just leave that off. Here, we're gonna go to grid. Here we can kinda adjust some of the parameters for connecting to our AC input. This system's gonna be in an RV where we have a generator, so we're going to turn off UPS function. This just allows the generator to connect faster and um, use it a little bit faster and more often because the generator is just not always 100% output, um, uniform output. We're gonna leave everything else kind of default here, and then we're gonna go to inverter. The inverter tab, we're gonna be able to set the, the low voltage shutdown for our particular batteries. Um, you're, you're gonna wanna kinda set those based on manufacturer's recommendation. Um, lithium batteries, most time it's around kinda 11, 12 volts for shutdown. Um, so we're gonna set that. We're gonna set that to 12 here, but you're gonna wanna make sure you kinda check with your manufacturer. We're gonna also, um, we're gonna also want to kinda set when when the inverter restarts from a low voltage shutdown you want to kind of set that a little bit higher than when you shut down so that the inverter kind of has time to charge the batteries before powering the loads or we have time to charge the batteries off of solar before kind of the inverter uses that power to power the loads if you do it too close um, that can potentially cause a situation where we charge the batteries power up our loads our loads drain our batteries and we just have an endless cycle of shutting down and turning off. And then DC input low pre-alarm, that um, just alarms, notifies us when the batteries are getting low. Usually you set that to about the same value as the restart. And then we're gonna leave everything else here on this tab, kind of where it is. AES, we're gonna leave that off. We're gonna leave power assist on. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to, oh, um, since we've made those changes, it says that the device might re, w must be restarted to kind of apply those. We'll do that after we've adjusted all of our settings. We're gonna go to the charger tab. Here we can program the charge controller. Here under the charger tab, we're going to tell the inverter how to charge the batteries. Um, once again, you're gonna wanna make sure you kind of verify these with your manufacturer. We're using lithium batteries in this application. So we're gonna scroll kind of halfway down to lithium batteries and turn this on. This kind of turns on most of the settings we need for lithium batteries, turns off settings that we don't need like equalization and temperature compensation. So doing this first kind of simplifies um, programming. And then we're going to make sure that our absorption voltage matches what the manufacturer recommends. These ones, they usually recommend 14.2 for the battery we're using. Float voltage, we're gonna set that also. This battery recommends 13.8, so we're gonna use that. We can set um, absorption interval, repeat time. Um, if you don't know, I just leave that kind of default we're gonna to wanna to make sure our charge curve here is fixed. You're gonna to wanna to make sure equalization is off. And that's kind of all the settings that um, we have here in the charger tab. And then for certain applications, uh, Victron has kind of other settings that um, you can use. There's AC input control. This is designed for applications where you might have the grid all the time but you don't want the inverters connected to the grid at all times. So you can kind of set it at a voltage or state of charge where it connects to the grid and then disconnects when the battery is fuller um, to, to kind, of, kind of help you save on electricity costs. Um, one thing to kind of take into account with AC input control is um, when you're using this, the grid is physically disconnected internally in the inverter. So if you have a large load, if you overload the inverter, it takes time for the inverter to sync to the grid to connect. So um, 
if you're constantly overloading your inverter, you might want to change these settings um, to kind of allow it to connect sooner um, before you're kind of overloading or you're hitting your low voltage shutdown. And then um, new feature that Victron just released just recently is found here under advanced. And that's um, called solar and wind priority. This feature allows the inverter um, to not charge the batteries off of grid and let solar or wind power charge the batteries fully. Um, and and kind of as a fail safe, you can uh, program this where if the batteries aren't charged within seven days, you can use grid power to charge your batteries up to 100% to kind of maintain the life and get the best results out of your batteries. Um, if you want more information on this, go ahead, um, click here on more information, read about that. You can even click the links to the manual on Victron's website. Um, but it is a cool feature that they just released that we can utilize to kind of harness more solar power, put that into our batteries and use less of the grid power. Okay. That's all the settings we have here for this inverter. Cool feature we have is you're gonna need to kind of program every inverter, but Victron has the ability, you click on the three little dots here and you can copy all the settings that we just made to this one inverter to all the other inverters. So we can click here, copy settings to all. Now it's writing it to the other inverter. So we don't need to worry about programming that one. We're done, so let's restart that. All right, that's all that we need to do to program a Victron inverter.